Hello, chat. <clears throat> Hope you're all doing well. Hi. Hello, Ataraxia. Hello, Pedro. Hello, Wolf. Missed you this morning, Wolfram. Hope everything went well. Why am I being bonked? Stop. No, I am doing stuff. How are you? <laughs> Oh, Remeth. Doing okay is a very abstract concept. Well, I still hope that you're doing okay. Oh, congratulations. I have never been able to do very well in Clash. They just look at my moveset and they just ban Soraka Yumi and then I'm just like, what do I do? Hi, Planet Popper. A friend of mine got Dead by Daylight, so she wanted me to teach her the ropes. Nice. Did you guys have fun? Oh. She's being scary. Though so found out still burnt out on DVD. Understandable. Target banned? I always get target banned in Clash every single time. Because, like, I have 3 million mastery points on Yumi. Or 1.3 million. And I have like 600k on Soraka, so they're just like, ban both of those and she can't play anything and they know what? They're right. <laughs> I can't. I mean, if she's gonna keep being creepy, I might have to stab her. Sakura Seraph just followed. Enjoy your emotes. Sakura. Thank you so much. Sakura Seraph. Oh, thank you for the follow. Welcome. And thank you for the drink. I will get it done right now. I kind of want to quit out of this game and start it from the beginning because I had a very interesting opening sequence that I want to start with. <laughs> I appreciate it. Content warning. This is a horror game and it is not intended for all audiences. Please visit our website, blacktabbygames.com, if you need a full list of content warnings. Slay the Princess contains flickering image effects as well as a parallax effect that, on rare occasions, has caused motion sickness in players. If either of these cause health issues for you, you can disable them in the game's preferences. Whatever horrors you may find in these dark spaces, have heart and see them through. There's no premature endings. There are no wrong decisions. There are only fresh perspectives and new beginnings. But this is a love story. My preferences. Put the volume down a little. <coughs> Controls, leave it alone. Had this game on your radar? I've definitely seen other people play it. Or, well, okay, that's a lie. I haven't seen anyone else play it. I've seen people playing it, if you know what I mean. New game. Chapter 1. The Hero and the Princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. 
and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Oh my god, there's so many options. I immediately... Turn around and Seriously? leave. Seriously? <laughs> you're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? <laughs> can quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. So much for choices mattering, huh? You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. I don't care. <laughs> Good. Maybe everyone should die. It's what they get for dumping me in the woods and asking me to kill someone for them. When I said everyone, I meant everyone. That's a pretty large group to just condemn to death over a single princess. And, last I checked, you're part of everyone too, so if you think about it, walking up to that cabin and slaying her is really in your best interests as well. I still have the heart hands? Oh shit. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. But fine. You turn around and trek back down the path you came. Yeah, I do. Oh, would you look at that? You're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. I'm not doing it. You can't tell me what to do. Oh yeah? Well, I guess I start walking in a different direction. Again. In fact, I'm going to just keep trekking through the wilderness until I find a way out of this place. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. I don't care. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realize that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, the cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. Indeed, actually. It is my goal in life to irritate you specifically. You've doomed us all. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. But of course you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness. But it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. Chapter 2. The Stranger. <laughs> You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. 
and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Wait, hasn't this happened already? It hasn't. Or if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. I don't know. I think it's more fun if he knows what we're thinking. He's like a captive audience. Voice of the Contrarian? The entire world ending wasn't enough to get rid of us. I don't think there's much he can do other than object. I wonder what else we can do to ruin his day. <laughs> if by ruining my day, you mean ruining everyone's day forever, then yes, I suppose there are plenty of ways you could pull that off. The world really did end last time, didn't it? We should be careful. For all we know, we just got lucky. The world hasn't ended yet, and you are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff those pathetic little voices to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. Oh, I can't even not go. <laughs> Those walls weren't here last time. You can't just force me to go to the cabin. What are you talking about? I'm sure those walls have always been there. It makes sense if you think about it. If there weren't any walls in the woods, someone might have gotten lost. Or, heaven forbid, someone other than you might have stumbled onto the princess. Yep. Okay. Heading to the cabin now where I'm definitely going to slay that princess. You know I can tell when you're lying, right? Please take this seriously. I am begging you. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If we're stuck going in there, maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. Ignore him. He's just being difficult for the sake of it. Let's Keep an open mind. Proceed into the cabin. The cabin interior is wrong. A confusing patchwork of many cabin interiors, all projected across what's almost the same space. But it's all shifted. An inch here, a foot there, such that the seams are never quite visible enough for the place to make any sense. The only furniture of note is a plain table, its legs all the wrong lengths. It's material devoid of feature. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. If he wants us to take it, maybe we should just leave it to collect dust. Or better yet, grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyway? No, we're taking the knife. <sighs> Have you seen this place? We have literally no idea what to expect, and no idea what we're dealing with. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? You can't just say that. But when everything here is so wrong... Listen to me. My job is to describe facts as facts, and to guide you through your job which is to slay the princess and, through that action, hey, save Amy. the entire world. And if you're going to slay her, you cannot let fear creep into your heart. You cannot lose yourself before you even get to her. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you've piqued my interest. What's going to happen if we lose ourselves? Nothing, because you're going to pull yourself together. Just ignore the stressful geometry and stay calm. How? Even if we closed our eyes, you're constantly describing it to us. I'm not going to stop doing my job, so you're just going to have to get better at yours. And quickly, if you don't mind. Yes, take a deep breath. I'm all for getting That's under his skin, too, <laughs> but we'll miss out on loads of fun if we shrivel up into a ball and go insane the first time we see something weird. What you're seeing here is obviously real. Just accept it and go with the flow. It really isn't hard. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. 
Good. Now, whenever you're ready, we're all waiting for you to complete a very important task. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. Ooh, we should look at ourselves. Wouldn't that be fun? You won't be looking at yourself because there isn't a mirror. There's the table, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. You insisting it isn't there just makes me want to look at it even more. The contrarian is my inner voice for sure. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. I have de- like, demon hands? But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone. You know that taking the mirror away from us isn't going to change things, right? We'll find it again, and then we'll see whatever it is that you don't want us to see. I'm gonna enter the basement without the dagger because he specifically told me to take it and I, oh, ooh. You like move the, the mouse and it just, it doesn't move the background at all. Okay. I'm entering the basement without the mirror the because the I wanna do the opposite open, of what the, what the narrator says. I don't branching like branching staircases all built from unidentifiable materials. I don't like being forced to come here when I said I didn't want to. Nothing here seems to belong, and the closer you examine your surroundings, the more confused you get, your head throbbing with the effort of making sense of this place. None of the stairs even seem to go anywhere, let alone down. What do you mean those stairs look like they go down? The air here has a sickening, almost sludge-like miasma to it, the kind of indiscernible quality that comes from the blending together of every scent there is at once. An odor that is simultaneously everything and yet the sum of it all coalescing into a thick, nauseating nothing. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, a disquieting collage of tone and personality, drags up the stairs. Hello? Hi. What are you doing here? Are you here to kill? No. No, thank you. Oh, don't be such a baby. I don't want to do this. Let's just turn around and leave. This feels wrong. This feels like a trap. Like whatever we do, we're going to die. Why is the voice of the hero such a bitch? We don't even have a weapon. But we already tried turning around and leaving, didn't we? And he threw up a wall. No way to go but forward. And whatever choice we make, whatever she is, we know one thing for sure. And what's that? That the fate of the world hinges on your success? There'll still be plenty of ways to ruin his day. Mm. Well, I always like to go left to right when I have a decision to make, so... You step to the left. The path is cruel against your feet, the impact of each step sending pulsing vibrations up your legs until there's nothing left in them to feel. The air around you grows cold the further you progress. At first, a barely noticeable drop, quickly evolving into a numbing cold. Your toes feel like blocks of ice. Your breaths puff out in clouds of condensed vapor. You shudder against it as you continue down the stairway, losing yourself in the bone-deep chill. Hey, Hidden. You slowly lose sense of yourself the further you go. Time disappears, and you can feel yourself to begin to untether. Physical sensations dull and then vanish, until the only things experienced are the endless repeating patterns and emotions of the journey. Is are the drawings becoming less defined? To a destination long forgotten. 
consumption and betrayal, skepticism and blind devotion, rivalry and submission, terror and longing, pain and unfamiliarity. But at the heart of it all, an emotion that can only be described as... Are you just going to stand there? What... what the hell was that? What happened to us? I feel so strange. Like I'm fundamentally different, but also still the same person I was at the top of the stairs. Oh well, that was a trip, but now it's over. Time to get back to our old devilish ways. The princess, eyes bright but otherwise shrouded in darkness, watches you impatiently from the other side of the basement. Don't forget why you're here. To do nothing, yeah, I know. And uh, why are we here again? In case you weren't listening, I'm afraid I lost myself on the way down. <sighs> You're here to- He's just being an ass, we remember. Though I'm still not sure if we should trust you. Let's talk to her for a bit, try and get our bearings. She seems... normal. Mm. Let's see. Getting down here was weird, like I was pulled apart and put back together again. Do you know what happened to me? What? Like you need me to hold your hand and tell you everything's okay? You're not really cut out for this, are you? Why are you even here? We're probably stuck down here forever, aren't we? There's no way out, and barely a way in. As the princess speaks again, it's almost as if she fractures. And where there was once just one of her, there is now another. We can do that? I don't like this. It's those cabins all over again. Can can we put her back? You said you'd been here before, right? What exactly happened last time? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. But I'm not going to waste any more time prying out details if you're going to be so irritating about it. It seems to me like you saw something you weren't supposed to have seen. If only you'd listened to whatever words of wisdom you were given in that other reality. But what's done is done, isn't it? Whatever you saw last time, unsee it. Whatever thoughts weaseled their way into your head, unthink them. If it's not already too late. You have a job to do here, and you need to do it now. We're just doing Ooh, a lot of plan. talking to ourselves. Let's see if we can make even more of her. Ooh, I like that idea. Uh, let's see. Do you know why you're down here? Maybe it's because I'm dangerous. But you know, right? You have to know. You're the only other person I've ever seen. Or at least the only one I can remember. Don't give me false hope. Please just end this already. One way or another, just do it. Oh, don't be coy. We both know why I'm locked away here. I'm a monster, and the second I get out of this place, I'm going to end the entire world. I don't think we're going to be able to put her back. Mm. Kind of hurts to think about it, doesn't it? It's like everything we say just multiplies her. It certainly looks that way, so please, for the love of everything, stop asking her questions and stop stalling. You're obviously just making things worse. Don't tell me what to do. I do what I want. If I let you out of here, what are you going to do? I don't think what I'd do really matters, does it? I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or that I'd do any other number of good things that I'm sure you think you want to hear. Besides, you already know what I'm going to do. If you want to put an end to me, then put an end to me. Not a single real answer. At least aside from this blood and destruction, it's infuriating, isn't it? Whose buttons are there for us to press? Whose skin is there for us to get under? Not exactly how I'd put it, but I don't disagree. There must be something we can do. Asking questions just seems to make things worse. 
Okay, this but was like fun for a bit, but we can't even really interact with her, can we? What's the point of asking questions if all we're going to get is a million answers? Can't even follow what's going on anymore. We need to get out of here. This whole place is making me itch. No. What's your name? You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Princess. It doesn't matter. I've been down here for so long. I don't so think long. she sounds anything What's like me. What's the point me? of a name if there's no one around to use it? No, I don't need a name. My name is whatever hushed whispers follow in the wake of my devastation. None of them have names. How astute. I told you she was untrustworthy. Does she sound like me? I don't think she does. There's... Oh, but we asked her a question and she didn't multiply. There's more of you now. And what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to get under my skin? I don't feel like I've gotten any bigger. It must be fear creeping into your heart. You know you can't stop me. Any help? Oh. Not that there's much I can do, all chained up like this, but I'm the only one down here. So if you need anything, I'll do my best. She fractures again. I don't like where this is going. Neither do I. Which is why you need to slay her now before things get more complicated than they already are. How would we even do that? Where would we start? Could always start by retrieving the blade. Can we even leave this place? I don't like thinking about what might happen to us if we have to go back through those stairs. Well, that's where the blade is. If you want it, you'll have to go and get it. This is reaching its breaking point. If you don't act now, there will be nothing in here but her. Take a deep breath and focus up. You can do this. But how do we decide what to do? Can there even be a right choice when all of them are so different? Stop overthinking it. Your drifting thoughts have clearly been part of the reason this situation has gotten out of hand. If you're trying to do the right thing, there's only ever been the one option, and that option is slaying her. Just... just do something! Do anything! Do all of it, if that's what you want! This place is hell, and it's only getting worse! If we want to get one, then we want to save this one. Wait, that's not right. Go on. You take a step forward. Your foot lands, but it lands... different. You experience a firm footfall, a gentle tread, a confident stride. You can feel yourself rupture. The room spins, your perception multiplying in a sickening kaleidoscope as your very self is pulled in incomprehensibly many directions. You find the blade suddenly in your hands. All at once you use it to strike at her bindings as you remain upstairs and slay her and leave her to languish alone. Is this what the end of the world looks like? What an unbearable mess. But this... We, we can't... Do you not have anything witty to say? I could use a good bit of wit right now. No, I don't, because this isn't fun. How are we supposed to have fun if everything is happening at the same time? It's the same as nothing happening, and nothing is excruciating. Luckily for all of us, nothing and everything doesn't go on forever. The world and the princess collapse in on themselves before it all... ...falls apart? I think he's gone. I Anyone certainly am. To salvage this, I don't know we? what's going on. What happened, what happened to, us? to us? What are what we? Are we? There, are there are parts of us that are dead, dead and, and the others... And the others they just, just don't fit. fit. They just don't fit. We, we can, can feel, feel them moving, moving around, around in spaces they, they, they don't belong. belong. It's, it's all so uncomfortable. So so Did you do this? Did, Did we, we do this? this? Can, can, can you pull, can us, you back pull us back apart? Can you fix us? Can you fix us? We should help her. I think 
We did this. How surprisingly <laughs> sincere. I can't fix her. I didn't actually think our actions had consequences. It's a little late for regret, isn't it? Please, please, please. 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 I'll do my best. Oh, bye. But you don't know if she had the chance to hear your reply. She's gone. Replaced with something else. I think I got an achievement. She's gone. Where did she go? The illusion Should of choice. When everything her? is possible, nothing is. What is that? Yeah. Why is it here? Why now? Approach I'm begging there. you, don't do this. Ignore him. I'm the narrator now. This, this doesn't feel right. It feels different. Final. Yeah, don't look at it. I don't like that thing. Listen, voices in my head. I choose what to do. The voices feel small, distant as you approach. Gaze in your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone, but the mirror remains. It's fine for you to see what's in it. It's you. You are alone in a place that is empty. It is quiet here. Proceed to the cabin. You are at the cabin. Approach her. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Destroy your body. You raise your will to end your life, but as it buries into the space your body should be, you feel nothing at all. One of the many hands in front of you reaches forward and gently touches the side of your face. There's nowhere for you to be but here. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, is this the end of the world? How can the world have ended if we are talking? Fair enough, I guess. Are you the princess? She is part of me, and part of me is her. But were you always the princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? What are you? I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? That's not an answer. I don't know what I am. I think that you are like me. We are oceans reduced to shallow creeks. The gift of a fragile vessel? Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond. Perspectives to make my own. These ones are a contradiction. A winding kaleidoscope of paths and walk. They are stretched into a shape not unlike me, but it is a shape they cannot hold. I feel like I'm not smart enough for this game already and I've only been playing it for 40 minutes. I am sorry that you met this vessel so early in your journey, but they will make for a rich and vibrant heart. Do not mourn them, for they will finally get to know themselves. 
Do you know the narrator? You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. Are you what sent me to slay the princess? Are you what trapped me here? I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. Do you know about the worlds beyond this place? I know only that they are. Do we know each other? You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. What happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole. And perhaps then we will know our freedom. This game is full of philosophies and thinking quarries? Oh no. Then this is not gonna be an enjoyable watch for you, chat. Cause I am just full of just head empty and boob jiggles. Like that's really it. Aren't you scared that I'll find you to kill you? Find I'll find a way to kill you? I have not lived. I am not afraid to die. How much will I forget? Everything. Until we meet again. How many more pieces of you do I have to find? More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. And what if I don't let you do this to me? Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished. Dry. Hollow. I was sent to slay the princess to stop her from destroying the world. If I help you, is that what you're going to do? You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape, to remold. You're being semantic. What are you going to do if I help you? How can I know? I am flickers in something sprawling and unilluminated. <laughs> Let's just continue to be stubborn, chat. <laughs> I'm not going back. If you need time, then I'll wait with you. You are as I am now, and forever is a long time to remain undone. I am not you, <laughs> but I know that I would return before forever was finished. What textures will you weave for yourself to occupy forever? Will you place the images of you and I into a box for safekeeping? If you close that box, will you become another you in another world? An imaginary pattern repeating itself until it can no longer bear the weight of its hand-drawn cage. You'll always come back to the box, because you'll always want to know what it means to be you. I will be here waiting by your side, until you're ready to return to mine. Oh. <laughs> the game closed. Well, it sure showed me. Showed. <laughs> I kind of had a little bit of my tongue out there.
<laughs> well, game sure told me. Oh. Though you were gone mere moments, I never left your side. What did that say? Except, or I never left your side. Attempt to outweigh your destiny. <laughs> okay, make me forget. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. Oh. Everything goes dark. And you die. Bring the stranger to her, a spiral vessel. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. The real Slay the Princess starts here. You'll know it when you see it. Well, I mean, but theoretically, if... Okay, so say you're the same person, right? And she just makes you forget. Won't you just keep doing this same thing over you're and over if you don't remember it? If you don't, it will be the end of the world. There, it's not even an option anymore. There was the like, not do this option down here. It's gone now. Okay, so you, you can't do it again. Interesting. The end of the world? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. But how can a princess locked away in a basement end the world? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, I mean, you might as well walk, reach man. the end of your journey. Have you considered that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because she's locked up? While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Okay. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, <laughs> of course, you do your job and slay her. Killing a princess seems kind of bad, though, doesn't it? Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Rude. Can't someone else do this? Oh, if only that were the case. But I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far. But unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. 
Have you considered that maybe I'm okay with the world ending? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and oh, the walls are painted in, in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is up the blade is your implement. All right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Yeah, but I didn't take it last time, and it was just given to me if I didn't take it, so... The door to the basement creaks I just noticed open, that the, uh, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated the, um, by an unseen light in the room below. Mouse cursor is this a is hand holding a blade. <laughs> the air feels heavy, and her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. <laughs> Just checking in on you. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs. Oh, I didn't get a choice of stairs this time. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Where's my contrarian voice? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife and the two of us just... talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. Mm -hmm. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. See, this is why I don't think that slaying her is the right choice because she's not really doing anything to like convince you to not kill her. Like, she's almost goading you to do it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. All right, fuck it. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. 
A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. When did I hesitate? It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurt! Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. We can still turn this around. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here, either. Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. The two of you fall to the floor. This was fun. The princess gasps, her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. You're here to slay her. I'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu. A terrible sense of deja vu? No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. Hmm, don't think that's true. If it doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep... You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot... That's fine. It doesn't matter if he can hear us. The only thing that matters is marching up to that cabin and winning. Contrarian and stubborn. Definitely two voices that are always in my head. <laughs> That's the spirit. There's no point in squabbling when the real threat is just up that hill. I can turn around and leave? Alright, let's go. A warning. Before you go in, she will lie. Lying mm -hmm. and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Not that it matters. It's not like she can lie or cheat in the middle of a fight. Are you sure about that? The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument over what circumstances the princess is capable of lying <laughs> in. It was to give you some broadly applicable advice. Aha, uh -huh, very funny. The princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. So don't trust her. Ever. Are we clear? Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. The cabin is tighter than its exterior would suggest. Its cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Oh, the door is different, and the mirror is here. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But there was a mirror a second ago. There's a now mirror right gone, now. it's gone, so all of us can stop arguing about it and get to fighting. 
You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing hey, a rough stone staircase, its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally. It's been ages since I've had a good fight. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your wits about you. Remember, you're here to slay the princess, not to have a good fight. As you descend the final step, oh, the shit. form of the Look princess at her. comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Look at her. She looks like a tiefling. Sheesh. <laughs> I like. I'll wait for the ads to be over to continue. Plus, this art is nice. Yeah, she looks like a badass. She looks like she's gonna kick my ass, chat. Oh my god, I didn't even notice the numbers on the top left. I, they're so small, I would have never known to look up there. I don't know. It was good eyes, though. I would have never looked up there, to be honest. Alright, we're back from our ads. Looks like she could rip those chains out of the oh, wall without changing. a second thought. Spooky. Oh, I never put chat back on the screen. Why didn't you guys see something? It's a good thing that I didn't because you guys wouldn't have seen that. Hold on, we'll put it down here. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. Yeah, uh, Pickled Cucumber, I run three minutes of ads every hour and it turns off pre-roll ads for an hour. Instead of running a minute of ads or whatever for every 
20 minutes or whatever it is. And you brought your little knife, too. Yes. Uh-oh. I'm going to have fun breaking you into little pieces. Pedro, look away. So you do remember me. Oh, I remember you all right. Best three minutes of my life. So, why don't we do it again? See? She wants to fight us again. There's no reason for us to stand around talking. All right. Fine. I believe you. What? What you said earlier in the woods, I believe you. You've already met the princess, and the princess has already met you. But that's all the more reason to take this seriously. You don't know, but whatever brought the two of you back to life isn't a fluke. And beyond that, do you know who doesn't remember anything that happened last time? Me. I don't remember. <laughs> Three minutes is usually enough for me. Uh, are you okay? Of course I'm not okay! As far as we're all concerned, the fate of my world is still very much on the line. Not all of us have the luxury of jumping over to a parallel universe the second we die. I mean, I am kind of like a dick. <laughs> Just because it bothers you, I'm going to take this even less seriously. You don't know the depths of my apathy. You're joking, right? I'm just going to pretend that you're joking. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you better be joking. We can't win unless you take this seriously. You don't tell me what to do either, voice of my own stubbornness. You look different. You look exactly the same. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what happened to you since the last time we met, but I'm not finding a giant demon lady. Bye. Oh, you've got another thing coming if you think you can just turn around and leave. As you step towards the stairs, you hear the heavy creak of straining metal. Uh oh, that snap. Oh shit. <laughs> She's loose. You have to uh -oh. make a decision and you have to make it fast. Run away. Okay, team, what are we thinking? <laughs> uh, how about we get the hell out of. Little voice doesn't have the chance to finish that thought before the princess barrels into you and smashes your body into the rough stone wall. Can I finish my thought now? Sure. Why not? Here. So glad we could stick around to hear the end of that. But I'm afraid that's all the time you had left. Why, for the love of everything, did you stop to think? What did you expect you'd come up with? It doesn't matter, because everything goes dark and you die. Great job. No. Come on. We can't be dead. We didn't even get a chance to fight her! Dead is dead, but maybe you'll have better luck next time. Chapter 3, The Fury You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path... All right, change of plans, no more hesitation, no more dying, we're taking the fight straight to her. If we had a chance against her, we already missed it, didn't we? She got stronger, and we stayed the same. We've seen her bleed. Whatever she is, she started out mortal, which means she probably is still mortal, which means we can win. We just didn't take things seriously enough last time. If that's what you want, then fine. Enjoy being beaten to death again and again and again. <laughs> The voice of the sad weenie. <laughs> You're stuck here with us too. For all you know, we'll never get to leave this place until we get it right. Well, this is just great. <sighs> Let me cut to the chase. 
Clearly, you've already been here. Indeed, I have. Yeah, you think? Actually, I don't think we have been here. This is all different, isn't it? Oh, well, glad he noticed. That's a good point. Everything here is a little off. Yes, precisely. And if you'd given me two seconds to finish my thought, I would have said that. Oh, so sorry for interrupting you. Oh, you're actually letting me talk now. Great. If you've already been here, it means you've seen things you aren't supposed to have seen, and you know things that you aren't supposed to know. This doesn't look like a park in the woods if reality seems distorted. It's because reality is distorted. So you knew this could happen. You knew we'd be able to restart like this. I know all sorts of things, which is why you should listen to me. That's not really an answer. <sighs> Look, if the world around you is changing, especially all the way out here, then that means you're nearing the point of no return. Whatever happens next, that's it. There won't be any more do-overs. So you'd better take things seriously. You said yourself that you know more than you're letting on. If you want me to go to the pattern, then you better or cabin, then you better tell us everything. I can't. Anything I say at this point is far more likely to accelerate the unraveling of this place than it is to actually help you do your job. It's always an excuse. In fact, I probably shouldn't have even said that. I trust that if you've been here before, it means you know how dangerous she is, and that you know I'm not lying to you about her. Really? That's it. That's all we're getting out of you. Even now, you're full of secrets. We're doomed, aren't we? I get it. You're conflicted. You've been through a lot, but I really have to be firm here. I will tell you one thing, which is that even now, you are capable of stopping her and saving the world from ruin. You always have been, and you always will be. Do with that what you will. If I don't slay her, if I just stay here or do anything else and we hit the point of no return, then what happens? Then what happens? Have you even been listening? It's the end is what happens. I've done this yeah, already. Yeah, but is there something after the end. How am I supposed to know? The end means finality. It's not like I can just peek on over to the other side and tell you what it's like there, if there even is a there. It doesn't matter because we're going to win. Now that's exactly the sort of mindset I like to see. Don't let yourself be consumed with self-doubt. Don't flirt with oblivion. Just focus on the present and everything will be absolutely fine. All right. Good, we're all on the same page. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up at the cabin on the hill. You'll find the princess within, as I'm sure you already know. End her. That's it? No final words of advice? I'd rather not waste any more time. I'm sure that any advice I'd give at this point is something you've already heard. That's fine by me. Let's get moving. I'm itching for a rematch. The interior of the oh. cabin is a place that feels long forgotten. There was once an elegance to its construction. Carved marble Everything columns holding a high arched roof. Vaulted windows letting in the weak organic. starlight. But that is how it was. Now there is a growth that has overtaken it. A viscous fluid seeps from cracks in the stone walls, and it congeals into chaotic streaks of writhing nerves and wet clumps of living meat. Gross. That's horrible. It doesn't matter. No, it kind of matters. The only furniture of note is a pulsating pedestal, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right.
You didn't mention the mirror last time either. Why? A mirror? There is no mirror. There's the pedestal, the blade sitting on the pedestal, and the door to the basement. Just to tell us where the door is. I'd like to get back to fighting, and if you want us to kill her so bad, I'm sure you feel the same. No more messing around. <sighs> I don't know what to tell you. There isn't a mirror because I would know if there was a mirror. You're either seeing things, or you're confused on the definitions of door and mirror. Or you're seeing things. That seems far more likely. <laughs> hmm. What are you trying to say exactly? He thinks we've lost it. That we're succumbing to madness, that something in us has broken. That's an unnecessarily melodramatic way to describe a hallucination, but sure. I'm not going to waste time arguing with any of you. It went away after we touched it last time, let's just do it again. You take the blade from the pedestal. It would be difficult to slip. Good. Nothing feels better than gripping cold steel. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it. As if you don't see it. You really it really is just like last oh, time. Sorry. Are we really hallucinating? Why here? Why now? Let's just smash it and get it over with. I'm ready to get violent. We won't be able to see what's in there if we smash it. Do whatever you want with it, the mirror isn't real, so how you handle it doesn't matter, aside from wasting dangerous amounts of time. You reach forward and drag your hand across the door leading to the basement. As if on command, it slowly slides open, scraping against the stone floor, its ancient hinges moaning as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? You step forward into the darkness. The stairs leading down to the basement are at once both narrow and grandiose. A high vaulted ceiling stretches up into a gloom beyond your sight, while walls wet with tumorous growths press in uncomfortably at your sides. You feel both unprotected and trapped, at once exposed and claustrophobic. The air is thick, its odor an oppressive violence. The metallic scent of fresh blood twisting with the nauseating embers of charred remains. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, a bellowing rage, roars up the stairs. So you've returned after denying me the salvation of combat? Are you here to gloat? Are you here to mock what I've become? Do you think that if you let me kill you enough times, I'll suddenly soften and repent for sins that live solely in your head? Well, we've tried that, haven't we? Now come down and see what your refusal has done to me. See how much you can bear to witness the consequences of your actions. But I don't want to see what we made. Can't we just give up? Blade, no blade, it's all the same. We can't beat her. Not anymore. We can. You're just a quitter. I want to see. Oh, we don't have a choice. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. The chamber's walls are painted in blood, a deep, sickening red that oh, drips down in clotted him. streams him, onto the charred him. corpses that make up its floor. This place reeks of torment, of ripped skin and burning bone. The princess stands in its centre, muscles flayed and bare and weeping, draped in a tattered dress of her own skin. Her heart beats from its place in her open chest. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? There's not so much a moment of hesitation before she steps forward. Her chains pull taut, holding fast as she strains against them. The cuff around her wrist digs deeper into her skin. Blood drips from the place where metal meets flesh. And then, with a nauseating sound, the skin tears. It plops to the ground, and she pulls her red, glistening arm free from her bindings. She is loose, and she is coming for you. Oh god. What can we even do against someone like her? 
She has such power, such beauty. Okay, Galadriel, relax. Stop that. We can win. We just have to lose our fear. Your heart free of fear. You charge towards the princess. Your eyes locked on each other. Both of you prepared to lay down your very essence in <laughs> one blow. Yep. I sneeze and miss and die. It's now or never. Let's make it a beautiful blaze <laughs> of glory. A horrifying squelch. Oh. You are well. unwound. <laughs> Uh, hello, Magna. We're doing good. We, uh, keep dying to this bitch while my chat is horny for her. I hope you weren't planning on dying. We're going to make this last forever. Huh. I feel cold. I've never felt cold before. The, the unending or whatever it's called. True to her word, you do not die by her hand, nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. W where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Approach the mirror. You approach the mirror. This, this doesn't feel right. It feels different. Final. Oh, Screw the mirror. We just need to find the princess. I don't want to look at us. How about everybody just shut up? Everybody. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. The bloat. You've grown. I did? I don't know what I am. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cavern. Because you scaling Momo, you are at the cavern. Flickering lights and empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. I think you are part bird when you got unwound as our feathers. Are you the same being as you were before? How much have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature, and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. <coughs> when this is all done, do you know what you want to do? With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be, and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am, and what I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires oh, I will hold okay, when hold I have on. changed. Hold on, hold on. I need to show you guys something. You can't see it because I don't have the cursor on and I didn't notice this until now 
capture cursor. Do you see? My cursor, so usually my cursor is like a hand holding a dagger. My cursor is now like my hand with the hooked claw on it. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, this is a great thing to wake up to for sure. Eldritch horror. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. She wants to know us, chat. When I go back, it's as if an invisible wall closes around me. Why can I not do the same things I've done before? Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen, and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now, inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. You have been kinder to me than anyone else I've met. Thank you. Eh, why? Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. That's fair. Do you have any thoughts on this vessel? This one is desecration. She placed the weight of her agony on you, yet it is she who unwound herself. But there is passion and empathy in her misery. She will make for a burning heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally found peace. What do you feel about me? These vessels I've been bringing you, I've hurt them. The vessels are a weave of emotion at odds with themselves, but they are only perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. Honestly, I feel like that's a very important lesson that a lot of people feel like they miss. That even though difficult things in your life happen, having difficulty and hardship is important because it allows you to grow as a person. And even though it's difficult in the moment, you tend to come out better from having experienced those bad things, even if we wish at the time we hadn't experienced those things. And, you know, that's, it's a difficult but important lesson to learn, especially when you're younger. Um, I'm ready to go back. I await your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. Do we have to be so loud when we do that? Can't you just kill me a little bit more quietly? Bring the fury to her. An unwound vessel. You're on a path in the You're here blah, to blah, slay blah. I know. You make your yeah, way kill me the quietly. Warning. She will love. Blah, blah, blah. Skip. <laughs> you take the blade from the table. Skip. The door to the basement. Good. You're still listening to reason. You step forward. Your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh, she didn't say anything. Oh, no talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. 
So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already oh, sinking deep into her heart. Oh, this is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes. Even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Hmm. I think that a lot, uh, there was something that one of the other routes said where it's like, as long as you believe something, that is what it is. So I'm going to be definite about it. Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. <laughs> Finally, I, I, an hour and a half. I don't think it took me that long. So hello, Mercer. Only a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some place far away. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. It took a while since the hand monster told you she was a creature of perception when you first met her. Listen, I'm dumb, all right? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, we're a creature of perception. So we just say, okay. So glad you're keeping an open mind. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just gonna stay here forever, right? <laughs> Didn't you hear the narrator? I am happy. We are happy. Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? Uh, yeah, honestly, that's what happened to me, Mercer, is that I... There was... So, uh, again, I'm not really that smart, so... I And I made the joke earlier that it was, like, supposed to be a thought-provoking game, and I was like, I'm just head empty and boob jiggles, all right? Like, it, you can spell it out for me and I'll still probably miss it. No, we're happy. Remember? We're happy. Really? Well, if you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. More happy time passes. 
though the word begins to lose its meaning. Time, that is, not happy. Happy still has plenty of meaning. Please, shake yourself out of it. We have to get out of here. No, we're happy. The little voices, please, fall on deaf ears. We're happy. Eventually you pass into a blissful state of pure existence. Though words like eventually and pass ceased to have any meaning to you long before that shift, you simply exist. Happy. Forever. Smile. You have already committed to my completion. You cannot go further astray. Past the point of no return, there's no going back now. Mm, okay, maybe I'm not happy, but I'm not just saying that because you're the last person I talked to. Good, because I have an idea to get us out of here, though you're probably not going to like it. <laughs> All right. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on, and I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. Might as well. He's right. It's the only way out. That's how we've met the hand creature every other time is by dying. It so. wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do. And the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. You don't tell me what to do. <sighs> Thank you. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You, you ingrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. The end. Nice knowing you. Nice knowing you too, dick. The Spectre. You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> oh, don't you start grandstanding about morals. The fate of the world is at risk right now, and the life of a mere princess. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. Well, if for whatever reason you're going to insist that this has happened before, at least your heart's in the right place. All right, let's go. A warning. Before you go any she will lie, mm -hmm. she won't be a problem. <laughs> We're getting real close. <laughs> the interior of the cabin is cold. A so blah, the blade blah, is your blah. implant. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. Like I've been saying, she's dead. We killed her already. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement. To what are you talking about? Shut up. This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. I touch the mirror every time. It you has to do something. forward and rub your hand. And but there was a mirror and now it's gone. Let's not spend much longer worrying over it. Clearly it's not even important enough to be acknowledged. You take the blade from the... See, and now we have a blade in our hand. The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old the room below. Nobody's here. Naturally. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. 
As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the wall by a thick chain. Okay, she's definitely dead. It's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from underneath the floor. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous skeletal grin. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? Ghost! Oh my god. Why is the voice of a hero such a bitch? Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Have you never seen Poltergeist, dude? They can do a lot. Oh, it's you. Hiya, Keller. I was Hiya. hoping to see you again. I have some issues with how our last meeting went. The princess drifts across the room into your orbit, gently running her fingers across your shoulders and down your neck as she circles you. Her touch is cold and ethereal, formless yet real enough that her icy fingertips send shivers dancing across your skin. So she has a body, and she's right there. That means we could kill her again, if we wanted to. Without a moment's hesitation, you lash out with your blade. It's like you're slashing at air. No matter how many times you stab at her, no matter how many angles you strike from, all you manage to do is interrupt her form, the skin of your hand prickling with cold as it passes through, unable to find anything solid. Hmm. You're adorable when you're confused. Thanks, I'm confused all the time. But I didn't say you could touch me. Okay. Why are you even here? Just making sure you finish the job, or what? The game made me. I tried to be happy. Slay the princess harder. You swing at the princess once more, and once more, your blade cuts through nothing as she disappears. Really? Her voice chides from elsewhere in the room. You whirl around, finding her hovering between you and the basement stairs, looking you over with grim disappointment. She draws in close. I was willing to let bygones be bygones, Keller. I was willing to ignore everything you did to me so we could get out of here, together. All I ever wanted was to leave this place. All I ever wanted was to find a way back home. Wherever home is. Her eyes turn from wells of sorrow to pits of wrath as she stares into you. Uh... Nothing spectacular happened in this run. I just basically ignored everyone and just went down and stabbed her real quick. I guess violence is the only language you speak. She forces her hand into your chest, and then... Yes? Nothing happens. Are you sure about that? So something should have happened. And yet it didn't. We're fine. You can't be sure if you first hear or feel what happens next, but it is over before you can fully conceptualize what it is. A horrific splintering, the squelching of organs, the rending of tissue, an icy, numbing pain. I'm done asking. The next time I see you, I'm taking everything I owed, starting with your body. If you won't choose to give me my freedom, I'll just have to make you give it to me. She's real now. If she's making us dead, we should return the favor. 
you swing your blade towards her briefly corporeal throat. It connects. A gash widens across her neck, glowing ectoplasm leaking from the wound. But it's too little, too late. In her hand, you realize she clutches your still beating heart. It thumps unsettlingly. Did we get her? Even if we didn't, we've given her something to remember. See you soon, killer. I'm afraid you'll never know. As she crushes your precious organ in her hand, everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the wood, and here we go again. Off to slay her again. The deck's stacked, isn't it? We kill her, we start again. She kills us as a goddamn ghost, we start again. I'm starting to think we're being run in circles just for the sake of it. Come on, let's not give in to all that misery just yet. There's got to be a way out of this. There's got to be a right answer. Yeah. And what if there isn't? Aren't you listening to me? What if all of this was rigged from the start? That's ridiculous. There'd be no point in all this if it was just some kind of... cosmic busywork. I think that's exactly what it is. The powers that be seeing how many ways they can screw with us. Could be it's all some kind of sick joke to them. But wouldn't that get... I don't know... boring? Okay, so you've already been here. Twice, even. Great. Then let me poke a few holes in your depressing little theory. Nobody here is screwing with you, and I can't imagine any scenario where you would have started over after slaying the princess. Well, we didn't have to start over. We killed ourselves. And why, pray tell, did you do that? Because you decided to foist an infinite tedium on us. That doesn't sound like me. If I'd had everything my way, you would have effortlessly slain the princess, saved the world, and been given your happy ending. The ending was the tedium. You locked us in a cabin and sent that cabin to an endless void, and then you told us we were happy. Well, were you happy? Of course we weren't happy. That's why we killed ourselves. It was awful. It was boring. It was bullshit! So you killed yourself? Yes, and then she killed us. Even though she was already dead. This is all fake. <sighs> okay, let's try to get it's back like on track. It's like a conspiracy track. theorist. You're real. The princess is real. The world is real. The people in the world are real. And the danger she poses to all of them is also, quite unfortunately, real. Whatever you did the first time, it sounds like it almost worked. So how about you give it one last try? Because killing yourself seems to undo all the good you almost managed to accomplish. All this standing around and talking is boring. Let's at least do something. Maybe we'll kill her again. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll even free her. I guess. And why should we help you? All you're going to do is lock us away forever again. Tell you what, I won't do that. I promise. Oh yeah, sure, that changes everything. I mean, he did promise. And you believed him? <laughs> Are you the same narrator we met on the other loops? You were quick to accept that we've been here before. If I had to make a wager, I'd say yes and no. That's a hedge, not a wager. I haven't met you, but you've clearly met me. It sounds to me like you're hopping between parallel realities, in which case the me you just met here is the same collection of experiences as the me you met at all of those other beginnings, but their continuity breaks the moment you say or do anything, in effect making them all separate. So yes, I'm the same me, 
but ever since the moment we started talking, I'm different. I'm not sure how we're supposed to kill him ourselves, but he's asking for it. Maybe there's some way she can take care of him for us. Oh, is the cold saying we can kill the narrator? I want to do that. They've clearly all been through some harrowing experiences. Don't let their baggage influence your decisions. You have the ability to see things clearly. I suggest you use it. We've killed her and been killed by her, and neither of those things have gone well for us. If we're going to fall through this loop forever, eventually we're going to let her out. We might as well do it now. You're making a dizzying amount of assumptions. Your perceived reality looping twice before does not mean it will continue to do so forever. Those little voices have already drawn attention to the fact that even the path is different. The world itself is at a tipping point. Know that there is always a choice. Even if you were stuck in an infinite loop, there's no reason to assume that the mere nature of the infinite would force you to make any specific choice. You do have free will, as much as things would be easier if you didn't, and you can just keep making the correct choice forever, never deviating. How convenient everything always comes back to what you want us to do. I'm sick of him. Makes me want to end the world out of spite. I've already ended the world. On second thought, let's not kill him. Let's throw him someplace that never ends. I'd like to see what that does to him. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? That's the another option. Then she finds a way out on her own. Ugh, of course she does. So, standing around out here is the same as us letting her out. Only we don't have to see her. That's gotta be better, right? No, it's strictly worse. But she can't kill us out here. Why would staying out of killing distance be worse if she's getting out regardless? Because it's cowardly, for starters. And because the unknown is always worse than the known. But really, all you're doing right now is weighing two considerably bad options. The only solution worth considering is slaying her, and whatever delusion is holding you back from doing that is just that. A delusion. If you already managed to end her in some other world, the only reason you'd be here is that you somehow managed to do it wrong. Okay, what do you mean you did it wrong? I stabbed her in the chest. How are we supposed to decide on anything if you just keep coming up with new rules? Since when is there a wrong way to slay her? <sighs> you continue down the path towards the cabin. It isn't long before you're steps away from your destination. I yeah, I should attach your chest first. you need any first. words of warning, I think you know what's in there, and despite your protestations, I think you know what you need to do. The more he talks, the mm -hmm. more I'm interested in setting her free. Yeah, I have to explore her weaknesses. Whatever. You don't want to listen to me? Do it then. Let her out. See what I care. It sounds like somebody's about to crack. Ooh. Are you trying to use reverse psychology on me, or have you just given up? There's obviously no point in trying to reason with you right now, especially with all these clowns offering up their useless advice. Honestly, it seems like the more I try and talk sense into you, the more single-minded they get about letting her out. So yes, I'm done trying to argue. Would you look at that? We won. Take it however you will. The interior of the cabin is long and dark, a single narrow hallway stretching far into the distance. Curtains billow out from tall windows on either side, obscuring the path forward, fluttering helplessly as opposing gusts of wind rush into the building, clashing and joining and driving everything forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Altab, for subbing for three months in a row. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.
Thank you. That's so sweet. How are you? The only furniture I've noticed. Hmm. That's strange. There's no dagger What's here. What's strange? Is it the mirror? <laughs> There's no dagger, idiot. The mirror? No, there isn't a mirror. What's strange is that there isn't much of anything in here at all, aside from the curtains. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? Because it's still in her chest, right? And when we stabbed her? Great. Something else has been taken away from us. <laughs> I suppose the only way to go is forward. So forward we will go. Blade or not, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's a very trippy decision slash non-decision game. It's very fun. Yeah, this is fine. Hello, Navi Cross. Approach, I always approach you the mirror. You slowly make your way towards the gaping maw that awaits you. Your fraying nerves buzz with trepidation, the chill wind raising your hackles as it gently pushes you forward towards the darkness at the end of the hallway. You can't shake the feeling that you're being watched. We've always been watched. You're watching us right now. Sometimes the feeling is just stronger than others. I feel like you're trying to put us on edge. We don't need all this anticipation. We just need this to be over. You stop as you reach the end of the hallway. I presume in front of whatever mirror isn't actually there. What are the odds she's waiting for us right now? Just out of sight on the other side of that glass. You reach your arm forward into the pitch black of the opening. Nothing. <laughs> it's like this place read our mind just to mess with us. What you looking at, killer? Staring into the void? Thinking about what it'd be like to die again? I know exactly how you feel. Shit. Where is she? You feel something long and frigid coil around your ankle. Your heart skips a beat, standing in muted shock for one long, frozen moment. And then it, she, the princess, constricts. Your bones snap. Yeah. Icy pain radiates up from the break, a deep cold flooding your veins as your legs, numb with the shock of it, collapse, and you collapse with them. You're met with the terrifying visage of the princess. Her yeah. hand grips your leg in a steel vice, her grin carved jagged from ear to ear, crowded with far too many long and crooked teeth. But do you know how I feel? I gave you a path to forgiveness. I gave you a chance to make things right. I thought maybe you'd seen what you've done and feel remorseful. Maybe try to make it up to me. But no, you'd rather use that path to keep making the same mistake over and over and over. Even after I ripped your heart out, you still cut me. And for what? I didn't go anywhere. You didn't banish me. I'm right back here with you. A little better, a little worse. <laughs> well, oh God. maybe a lot worse. So, here's how this is going to go. I'm going to take your body, and I'm going to walk it out of here. Well, how are you going to do that when you, you broke my leg? Do it. Completely helpless. Just like you left me. I say we let her do it. It's something different. Do we even have a choice? You always have a choice. Maybe before, but not now. There isn't a blade this time. Exactly. What choice is there if there isn't a blade? Well, unless you have any specific ideas, I think my vote's the only one that counts. Mmm... Let's see. Hmm. This is gonna be a hard decision, so I'm gonna let the ads go, and then I'll make a decision after. Cause I thought that, cause the whole thing is about 
perception, I thought that maybe there would be a thing where, like, we could sink the blade into our hands or something. Hmm. I think maybe wouldn't possessing me against my will make you no better than me. You don't have to be evil. You don't have to do this. Is a good option if we're going for like what perception is. But also. Hmm. Maybe, like, I'm a victim in all of this, too, you know? Would also for... But I think this one is, like, the quote-unquote option if you're, like, listening to the whole, like, this whole thing is perception idea. We're putting the thonking glasses on, huh? I have to try to be smart here. Just waiting for ads to finish real quick. gonna go with wouldn't possessing me against my will make you no better than me you don't have to be evil you don't have to do this oh that's a good one evil is all about perspective after all you've done why would i ever care about what you think of me oh god i'm a victim in all of this you know and sometimes victims become the same as their victimizers. Just because someone hurt you doesn't mean you get a free pass. That's fair argument. You should be grateful that I still have a use for you. Being mine is more than you deserve, really. Enough talking. We'll have plenty of time for chit-chat once this place is far behind us. You remain pinned to the floor of the oh, long God. hallway as the rest of the princess's body emerges. Her proportions all wrong, limbs bent and curling, moving in ways that defy your understanding. Her torso stretches until her face is practically touching yours, her neck cracking audibly as she twists to look at you from a fresh angle. Are you sure you can't do anything to help us? Can't you, like, manifest a rock right on top of her head? And crush you along with her? Not that I even can manifest a rock. Besides, I thought you all wanted to free the princess. Not like this. You don't even have a weapon, so I'm afraid you're out of luck, which unfortunately means that I, and the rest of the world, are out of luck too. And whose fault is it there isn't a weapon here? Yours, I assume. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Whatever you did in those previous lives of yours, you really messed up. Are you seriously trying to blame this on us? Your vision fades as she tears open the membrane of your soul. 
You're awake. Eyes once again fixed on the long hallway, your vision swimming as the princess's command reverberates inside your skull. Her voice is all-encompassing. You feel wrong. So cramped in here, like there's some sort of growth trying to push us all out. Oh, I hate I that know. noise. You rise to your feet, though the pain in your ankle is blinding. Your body slumps against the wall, desperately leaning into it for support. There's another option, you know. Don't help either of them. Flip the table. That gap where the mirror was, I don't think it goes anywhere. Let's throw ourselves into the abyss. Your body, Ugh. still slumped against the wall, I hate trapped that noise. between the princess's overwhelming will and the blinding pain of your splintered ankle, takes an excruciating step towards the cabin door. The movement is stiff, your body reduced to a marionette, pulled reluctantly along by your strings. In a single moment of overwhelming willpower, you tear your body from the wall and hurl it towards the gaping abyss. It is. Capillaries burst and muscle fibres tear as you and the princess struggle over the reins of your body. One foot planted firmly on the edge where the floor ends, and the nothing begins. It's unquestionable that her reserves are greater than yours, but fortunately for you, the distance you have to cover is far shorter. Enough is enough. I'm tired of us always losing. It's just a step away. You throw everything you have against her and manage, for one brief moment, to overpower the princess's hold on your body. But that moment was all you needed. Your foot slips a few inches, and you collapse forward, the darkness swallowing you whole. Her thought slips through you, unheeded, as you fall and fall. And fall. What an end. But well, at least it's ours. An empire of frigid nothing. I don't think this qualifies as saving the world, but at least you didn't ruin it. What happens now? But I want to know what he thinks happens now. Oh, and why is that? Because the hands are coming. He's gone, but... Terminal velocity ceases and you feel a something, a mass, a growth, torn out of you. You and the princess look at each other for a short moment. What? What is happening? The hands are coming. But you don't answer her before she's gone, and you feel a resistance underneath your feet once more. Memory returns. She's gone? Where did she go? Should we try and find her? Oh, there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Are you such a bitch? You approach the mirror. This... this doesn't... it's going to... 
do something to us. I can feel it. Ignore the cowards. You have to look. The voices feel small, distant, as you approach. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always takes them, makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. You've withered. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. You are at the cabin. I am a growing chorus of contradiction, a mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new, and to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. It doesn't matter how many times I go back, at least one of us always hurts the other. Doesn't that change you? Change, doesn't that make you worse? It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse, nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? Yes, you're torturing me, and I hate it. I think I hate you. Know that I hold no malice towards you. The pain of your journey will subside in due time. But you still have a ways to go before we are done. You can't be a contradiction. Contradictions don't exist. And yet my waters flow and my streets bustle. There are no words that can describe me into non-existence. There is no logic that can bind my multitudes. I am everything that you have known me to be, but I am also none of it. How can you stand to be a contradiction? As easily as you can stand to be you. You are like me, even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. What do you think of this vessel? This one is loneliness turned to seething. She could not find her strength in others, so she found it in herself. She will make for a driven heart. Do not mourn her. She isn't alone anymore. You know that at the end of this, or wait, no, no, that's... Do you know what happens to the worlds we leave behind? My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen, just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done. Have you figured out what you'll want when we're finished? The desires of my multitude thrive in endless competition with themselves, but none of them rise above their dance to influence me. I yearn for what I have always yearned for, my awakening. 
other desires shrink in the light of self-knowledge. All right, I'm ready. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. You're on okay. a path Hold in the on. woods. There was... And at the end of that path is a cabin. We got two achievements. And in the basement uh, of the that cabin The Exorcist 3. When is a taken princess. against your will, deal with your enemy the only way you can. And a seething vessel, bring the wraith to her. You're here to slay. Let's see. Hmm. I guess we do the beginning of it. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here? Have you considered that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because you locked her up? We've done this before. It seems it? like a bad idea. Are you a monarchist? <laughs> is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller? Oh, wait, we've done this seamstress. Can oh, someone else do this? if only that were the case, but... Forget Are it, I'm not serious? doing this. No, you have to do it. No, I don't. Of course I haven't. Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Can you tell me what my prize is going to be for doing a good job? It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Is it three werewolves and a comfy cabin in the woods? Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But a word of warning, if you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find... Could I suggest something to do? The Absolutely. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely. Also, there's no, there's no mirror this time. What do you suggest, Wolf? Go in unarmed. I did that once, remember? But okay. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? You did it on The Stranger. If you do it in Chapter 1, there are a lot of options. It's oh. hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Mm. 
Hi. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Please, come downstairs. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Uh, I'll see what I can do. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break when them When did apart. zero underscore back zero and one just followed? Enjoy your emotes. That was a good try, Texas Peach. Thank you so much, Wendigo Bacon Man. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'm gonna check upstairs. Maybe the key's still lying around somewhere up there. And if not, maybe I can at least find something to break you free. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Hey, let me out of here. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before oh raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. I don't like what happens when we don't do that. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, oh, gross. you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing?
stop that. Free will is a lie. Something's come over you, hasn't it? You, you know you don't have to do this, right? I'm doing my best. The narrator's being kind of a dick. Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it. Stop trying to resist me. I'm trying to get you out of here alive. You've never gotten me out of here alive. Resist. The blade. Move the blade. No. As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? Irritating you, mostly. I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no! I'm so sorry! Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Everything goes dark. And you die. The damsel. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the bay, you're here to slay. A warning. Before she will lie. If only you knew what you did to us, you <laughs> villain. Voice of the smitten. <laughs> Excuse me? Forget he said anything. But he is a villain. He made our beloved brutally take our life last time. He's trying to keep us apart, but he won't be able to withstand the power of our love. Last time? What are you talking about? I think he just likes to hear the sound of his own voice. Let's try to ignore him. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if I want to approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall. What are you talking about? Is 
You reach forward and rub your hand. But there was a mirror a second. And now it's gone. Pity. We could oh, have a I feather out of place, and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. <laughs> The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice! It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I think we're in love. Okay, I'm with you that we should be doing whatever we can to save her, but saying we're in love is a bit much, don't you think? We don't even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock again? eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Flattery will get you everywhere. You've been here before, haven't you? That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her. It was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but... What's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. We damned a whole world. But everything reset. Nothing resets. You're just somewhere else. You can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. Horrible for you, maybe. But we've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. Now, hold on, if she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end, and now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. We shan't. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you, just do your job. I'm sorry about what happened last time. The narrator who sent me here to kill you took over my body. It was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. Trust you, nobody asked. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. No, she just... She cares. She loves us. And we're just a toxic asshole. That's because she's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? Oh, that's a good question. She doesn't. There's no one else like me. 
Does she also have an annoying narrator in her head? I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. <laughs> what happened after I died? You died, and now we're talking. I didn't bring a knife. Do I have to cut you out again? I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists, and indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behaviour and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. Rescue the princess! No. I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll- You're what? I would if you had a weapon. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. You wouldn't. I would. <laughs> Trust me, dude, I have killed myself for less in this game. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? <sighs> you approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. This is literally my kink though, monster man and like super pretty girl. I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. I told you, there's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. If only you had a weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? What do we do now? What do you want to do? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. Can the voices in my head shut up? I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? Probably. I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. And then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? Oh no, she's one of those. If you want to leave, then let's leave. That sounds perfect. The princess takes your hand, the last hopes of the entire world slipping through your fingers as they intertwine with hers. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. True. I like to think that you do, actually. Shut up, dude. Look, I You're have such my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the lock 
clicks. What a dick. That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Yeah, except there's a window on the door this time, idiot. Oh no, did someone lock us in here? That's not fair. We're supposed to leave now. She's right, it isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Her hand's slender and long enough that she could probably unlock it if she, like, puts her hand through that gap in the door. Enough the with this window, true I mean. love nonsense. You just met her. Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. Yes, I do, because it's better than listening to you. I'm just along for the ride at this point. Do you think you can open it? I think we, because she said this last time, I think we can open it if we try together. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door together. Blech. He's such a downer. And? And? The lock clicks and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? We win. Love wins. I told you our love was insurmountable. You and the princess make your way upstairs and the blade, that's right, there's still a chance for you to do the right thing. Take the blade from the table and slay her before it's too late. I'm not doing that. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Yes. You're taking every opportunity you can to draw out the end of the world and make me suffer. I hate you. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin, and then you step outside. <laughs> Romantic haze, your love will set you free. A happy ending at last. We did it! What should we do now? Where did everything go? Where did he go? Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. <laughs> oh no. Can't ever just be happy, huh, chat? But you don't get the chance to make her that jacket. Nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory She's returns. Gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? This this doesn't feel yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt. Right? You've unraveled. You're at the cabin. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. I am curious to see what it means for us to know it. Do you think there are people out there? It doesn't matter if there are. People are frail and impermanent. You and I are the only things that interest me. Do you think that anything is real out there? Do you think that we're real? We are oh, real. Oh god. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. Are we real, chat? nothing <laughs> cannot exist on its own. 
and because of that, nothing can't exist. Do you have thoughts on this vessel? This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. Do you know what's going to happen when you awaken? No. The point of awakening <laughs> is to find out. When you send me back, I'm not alone. There are voices that speak to me. Some of them are me, but one of them is something else. I call him the narrator, and he wants me to kill you. Do you have a narrator? Have the vessels had one? No. Their minds are empty. Existent but constantly shifting into something new. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? He does, and when I find him, you and I are going to finally have answers. Do not look to one who fears me for your truth. The only answers worth knowing are those we can find within ourselves. I'm ready to go back. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you. She's saying we have one more go? The hero and the princess bring the damsel to her, a loving vessel. You're on a path, In you're here to sleep. Um, wait, hold on. Wasn't there like a... Okay. Mm, thank you, Ataraxia. Have a good sleep. Wasn't there a... Are you serious? Have a good lurk. One of the chapters is called The Thorn, I feel called. Um, what do you think we do for our last one? unarmed and try to slay <laughs> I was kind of thinking like one of the leaving ones again love and backstab oh that's just not nice I feel like we've killed her enough um hmm I kind of want to I either want to try to do another leaving ending, because I think you can try to leave once you've gone in. But I wonder if there is an ending of... Um, so when we were with the Wraith, she was like, oh, I was willing to just let all of this go. And I wonder if, like, you can... You can slay her, go in again, and then instead of immediately trying to kill her again, then try to talk to her and see if something she becomes like a different kind of ghost. Or if that's even an option. Time to try. Might as well. All right, well, let's fucking go. Should I say what's possible? I mean, we'll figure it out once we get down there, right? Because it, it'll either let us kill her or it won't. You make your way up the shore. The interior of the cabin is almost into the blade is your implement. You take the blade. The door to the base, her voice. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Sit 
since there is another ending inspector, Wraith will always lead to seething. But doesn't she always become the Wraith if we try to stab her again? Or isn't... But you said there's another ending inspector. So I don't think she becomes the Wraith unless we try to kill her a second time, right? Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs. She's so Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward. Oh, I'm probably chained. So. You lunge forward. You feel flesh. Uh, this is it. Is it? <laughs> I'm on. Do you actually. It's like. Yeah, but it's over. Is it over? Oh, it's not going to let me. <sighs> okay. So it's not going to let me pick this again. Of course not. That was too easy. It's over. Don't get all worked up. We should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? I really don't think you should do that. And why shouldn't we? Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. Except as a ghost. Remove the blade. You lean down and wrap your hand around the blade's hilt. But as you begin to slide it out of its resting place, you feel a sharp and sudden jab in your side. What was that? I guess I won't be dying alone after all. Quick, let's get out of here. It's too late for that now. You collapse to the ground as the mortally wounded princess twists a blade of her own deeper between your ribs. I will drink. Thank you, Mr. Alt-Tab. As you fall, she falls with you, exhausted by the effort, the little life that was left in her eyes fading rapidly. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. I guess we're even now. See you around. You were so close. Why did you hesitate? <sighs> it doesn't matter. At least you managed to take her with you. For whatever that's worth. Everything goes dark, and you die. The Razor. You're on a path in the wood. You're here to... <laughs> Turn around and leave. <laughs> you have already committed to my completion. That's true. All right. A warning before you, she will lie. It couldn't be more on the money, but we're really doing this, aren't we? I say you're lost, but I'm stuck here with you. We know what to look out for this time. We know to be careful. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. The interior oh. of the cabin is a jagged mess of warped wood the and broken boards. Their open, splintered sir. edges as uninviting as shatter. The blade is your. You walk up to the. What are you talking? Am I ever you gonna get to forward, touch this mirror the... during? Now it's gone. Yet another thing in here playing tricks on us. I hate this place. You take the blade from the table. It feels a bit better to have a... The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what must once have been stairs. The fractured slats look as if they've been torn from their source and violently jammed into the wall. The air seeping up from below has an almost metallic quality to it, like the smell of fresh blood. And you can hear what sounds like the rhythmic scraping of metal coming from down below. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Scraping? She's not even trying to hide her knife. It's like she wants to get in our head. That sound could be anything. It's probably just her chains dragging across the floor. I am begging you to get out of your head. Her grating voice carries up the stairs. I hope you've come to rescue me. 
I've been stuck down here forever. There is something so wrong with that voice. Yeah, she thinks she's better than us, like she doesn't even have to put on an act this time. As you descend the final step, the form oh, of the princess comes into view, her sharp eyes following you from across the room. Finally, somebody! Quick, get me out of these chains! We're not safe here! Come on now, we're not falling for that, are we? She's trying to trick us, but she can't hide that threatening edge to her voice. She just wants us to get close, to let our guard down. If she sounds threatening, it's because her mask is already slipping. She knows why you're here. You are armed, after all. What are you waiting for? You are here to rescue me, right? If I come close to you, you're just gonna stab me, aren't you? What? No! No, I wouldn't stab you. I am just a sweet, innocent princess trapped here for no reason. And you are a brave knight who's supposed to walk up to... not stabbing distance to help me. I have absolutely zero doubts that she is going to stab us if we get close to her. Really? What was your first clue? She certainly feels threatening. Just because she's acting like she's going to stab you doesn't mean she has the means to actually do it. She stabbed me last time, dude. But you know who is armed? You. So stop second guessing yourself and do your job. But I'm nervous. All the more reason to jump into the deep end and deal with her right now before you waste any more time getting stuck in your head. We killed each other last time, I'd rather not do that again. But if we killed each other, then why are we here, right now? Both of us normal and unstabbed. I do have to hand it to her, that's a very good question. And it's one with a simple answer. You haven't slain her yet. So how about you get moving? Last time? What are you talking about? Ugh, it's like the two of you are working together on this. Aren't you listening to her? She's obviously lying through her teeth. I'm terrible at spotting lies, and even I can tell something's up here. We can't be the only ones that looped back to the start. Someone else has to remember, right? Yes, something is obviously up, and we can all tell that she's lying. The thing she's lying about is how dangerous she is, not dimension hopping or time travel or whatever it is you think you're doing. What if we're both honest with each other? I was sent here to stop you from ending the world, and you killed me last time after coming back from being stabbed in the heart. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me. How many more times does she have to vaguely threaten you before you finally decide you're ready to deal with her? We're clearly still figuring out our angle. We don't have the luxury of watching this from a distance. Oh, I'm sorry, do you think I'm in a position of luxury right now? You're acting like you are. My entire world is at risk. Then maybe you should behave with a little more humility. A bit of self-deprecation would go a long way. No, I have my dignity. <laughs> Fine, then we'll continue to treat you exactly how you deserve to be treated. Mm, can we just talk things through? But we don't have anything to talk through. We're strangers and this place is cramped and annoying and you should just come over here and let me out. I think I've said my piece at this point. I think we all have. But if you want to keep exhausting your questions, it beats getting stabbed to death. Do you remember what happened last time? Last time? If somebody came into my house and stabbed me to death and then I killed him, surely I would remember that. But I don't remember it, so it must not have happened. 
But that's exactly what happened, so you do remember it. Would I just lie? Would I just lie to your face and tell you a thing I remembered happening didn't happen just so I could stab you again? Probably. I mean, just so I could stab you for the first time. Uh-huh, you crazy bitch. Ha! She slipped up there. She said again, and her taking it back doesn't count. Do you hear how deranged you sound right now? Please stop dawdling, this is only going to end with violence. Postponing the inevitable is only going to make it worse for you when it actually happens. Mm. Yeah, I'm not trusting this. Bye! <laughs> I know you have a knife. I'll let you out of here if you drop it. A knife? What are you talking about? I don't have a knife. Where would I keep a knife? Maybe behind your back? And why would I stab you to death? I don't know you. You haven't given me a reason to stab you to death. It would be so silly of me to cut you open and look at your insides. Okay, I'm gonna be right back real quick chat while we do ads. Thank you so much. Inner prison want? Oh no, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be right back. But we still have like a minute more of ads. Ads are so annoying. Thank you. Oh, look at that rolling. Hey, Saru. I am doing well. Thank you for asking. Hope you're doing well, as well. Just finishing up another five seconds or so of ads. So everybody can be here. Alright. Okay, I could have sworn we didn't mention stabbing anyone to death. Pretty sure we did. Sounds like she's really out for blood. Fortunately for you, she isn't armed. She totally is, dude. Prove it then. Prove that you don't have an eye. It would be so much easier to prove that I do have a sharp object. I could just show it to you. But I don't have one, so I can't. The princess smiles as she pulls her hands from behind her back. But look at this! Hands! Hands that don't have anything in them to stab you with! Her smile stretches into an even wider grin as she shakes her sleeves. 
Mm. And empty sleeves, too. Look at how few stabbing implements I have. It's practically zero. But it's not exactly zero. <laughs> but what if you're hiding it somewhere secret? We might have to strip search you. And me. I've shown you all I'm all about equality. Spots. What kind of princess do you think I am? I would never hide something sharp somewhere secret. Wait, that sounds like I'm lying, but I'm actually not. My secret zones are for me, only they have nothing to do with you or my intention to not stab you to death the second you get close to me. Her smile drops for a moment, her expression sharp and flat. I assure you, there's nothing hidden there. I'm inclined to believe her on that one. She seems serious. <laughs> of course, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't have something hidden somewhere. We know for a fact she's armed. I'd like to trust you, but you're being so suspicious right now. That's so rude of you, passing judgments on strangers you've never met just because they're different from you. How would you like it if I did that, huh? Silly little bird face thinks he's so serious coming down here but doesn't know anything. Thinks he can tell me to get rid of all the knives I don't even have while he gets to wave one around right in front of me. I bet you didn't like that, did you? I bet you didn't like being judged for no reason. Okay, I'm bored now. She's bored? That's absurd. She doesn't get to be bored. Not in a way that matters. She's a prisoner. She's <laughs> shit. In a sudden burst of movement, the princess leaps towards you, a Jesus. blade erupting from her free arm, her wrist limp and empty from the violent expulsion. Huh. So I guess she did have a knife of her own after all. How conciliatory of you. We appreciate it, really. Now what are we going to do? At least we're safe here. She's still in chains. And those chains stop her from continuing her advance, at least for a moment. She looks down at them with something between annoyance and confusion. And then she slices through her arm. Okay, maybe we aren't safe here. She doesn't even hesitate before darting towards you with a terrifying speed you can't hope to outpace. Ah, shit. Okay, she's down an arm and we still have a weapon. I guess we'll have to use it. And use it you do. But unfortunately for you and for the entire world, you are horribly outmatched. You keep pace with her for a single brief and wordless exchange before she severs your hand and, with it, your only line of defence. She's much better at this than she was last time. Yeah, it's unreal. Bloody cheater. I'm going to kill you now. Come here. And with a squelch, she does just that. Everything goes dark, and you die. What a bitch. You're on a path in the woods. No, fuck that. If we're going to have to keep doing this over and over and over again, we're not starting in that goddamn woods every time. We're starting in the fucking cabin. <laughs> I love how he's just like, no, fuck that. You're what? The interior of the cabin is sharp, a constricting mess of curved and battered sheet metal pushing you towards... Wait, excuse me? What just happened? What did you just do? I feel dizzy. You heard him. He said, fuck that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I guess I took us to the cabin, didn't I? Isn't that interesting? Who holds the cards now? The circle's getting smaller and smaller. Running isn't an option anymore. We have to fight. What's the point of fighting if she's oh, just God, going to win every time? Now. It hurts being sliced to pieces. We're better off just sitting up here and doing nothing. Great, so obviously you've already been here. How many times? I don't know, like 12? This is our third? No wonder things have fallen apart. Mm, you no, do realize that every has... time Hold you on. fail, she escapes and an entire world is damned to destruction, right? She has the Wraith, the Beloved, or the, the print, like the, the Damsel. The, like, open-chested one, which was, like, the first one. 
oh maybe it was three so this would be four but you usually come up here i was counting all the times you die because you usually have to die twice each round oh or did he mean like this was the third within this time that can't be right that's too much responsibility i couldn't agree more we couldn't be trusted I was meaning like total, but I guess he doesn't remember all of the last of the times. <sighs> Let's just stay focused, shall we? The only furniture of note is a bent metal table. A pristine blade perched- We take it. Okay, sure, you take the blade before letting me finish telling you it's there. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. This feels right. We just have to keep our senses sharp. That's right, we've got to be able to win eventually. And what if we never do? So, are you just going to stand there, or are you going to head to the basement like you're supposed to? I'd love to get started just as much as you would, but how are we supposed to get down there? You walk through the door. You do know what doors are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, like, when I was answering the question, I was counting all of our roots combined dying and having come back, but the voice of the hero doesn't know that those have happened because your memory is erased. But there isn't a door, it's just that mirror again. There isn't a mirror. You really messed things up, didn't you? It's like you can't even see reality anymore. I can feel the air coming up from behind it, stinking of iron and steel. He might be... Oh, sorry. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You really must think you're looking at a mirror. Well, it doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open it. Let's just move it out of the way without looking. I don't want to see us. I'm sure we all look awful after dying twice. Let's just fumble for the handle and be done with it. I don't care what we look like. I care about getting to the end of this mess. Oh. What are you trying to do? Call whales? Reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. It creaks open. And the mirror's gone. Eh, surprising. It was never there. Just an illusion. Guess it's time for us to see her again. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. You step forward, but you don't get a chance to linger on the basement stairs. <laughs> they are smooth and flat and metallic an unintentional and unfortunately slippery ramp that quickly sends you skittering to the bottom. Your body tumbles onto the basement floor and the form of the princess comes into view, standing at a distance. She gives you a wry smile. Hi, it looks like you don't have a way out, so I'm not going to play dumb anymore. But don't worry about how bad you did last time. That's part of the fun. Fun for her, maybe. I didn't like dying all over again. Thinking about dying makes us as good as dead. The only thing that matters is survival. Actually, does survival matter? We've died twice and nothing bad has come of it. We just need to find a way to win once. Nothing bad has come of it yet. Plenty bad has come of it. You've left at least one entire world to ruin. The people there mattered. The past isn't real. There's only here and now. Your internal bickering is cut oh, short by the wet nice. sound of slicing meat. From the princess's arms erupt twin blades glistening with her blood, the empty flesh of her arms flopping at her elbows like torn sleeves. The chain clatters to the floor. She's loose, and she is coming for you. You're going to make me walk over to you, aren't you? Shit. She's coming for us, and I'm out of ideas. <laughs> I'm gonna try flirting with her. <laughs> she has swords for arms, and we don't. We're panicking. She wins by killing us, right? So let's beat her to it. I kind of like that. No, 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 that's a terrible idea. 
Yeah, well, I'm always good at terrible We're ideas. Dead either way. Screw it, we've already died twice. What's a third? A third is a third. It's bad. Who cares? Fine. You raise your blade above your head. Oh, this is new. What are you going to do? Are you really going to stab yourself? Neat. Well, that's on the... Then you skewer yourself. I thought you'd be mad. Ow. Are we still here? Can we not actually off ourselves? Boo! Huh. That didn't do much of anything. We're tougher than I thought. Hey! The contrarian is back. Oh, a new one of us. I thought that only happens when we die. Did we die? Nah. We'd know if we died. Right? You're on a... No, you're in a... Where the hell are you? I think we're dead. And that's all we'll ever be. Dead, 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 dead. Stop saying dead, all of you. We might have died a second ago, but right now we're extremely not dead. This is all horribly wrong. How many times have you been here? This is four. No wonder everything's such a mess. This wasn't supposed to go past one. I wonder what you're going to do next. You're so full of ideas and I love that. But I guess we don't have time to talk about things before the princess advances. Okay, whatever we do gets us another us. Let's see how many we can stack. There's got to be a point where it makes us better than her. As long as we keep moving. Oh, great. So it's going to get even more crowded. Even more deluded voices that think we might stand any kind of chance. Who cares about getting better than her? Let's do something weird. Like, really, really weird. Oh, yeah, like what? I'm all about Come weird. On. Show me something new. Mm. What is something we haven't done? Because we have the only one that I remember is we can get, oh, we can flirt. So we can get the. Um, we could get the, the suave one. Oh, or maybe not. It doesn't work and she kills you again and again and again and again. Your memory blurs as your consciousness leaps from life to life to life, holding only snippets of the conflict that transpires. <laughs> compliment her on those okay. gleaming blades. There's nothing better than a capable woman. She skews you. You're cute. Thanks. Well, there's more of us. Let's see if that helps. We just have to hit her harder. She skewers you. You'll have to be trickier than that. Just panic. Flee. She skewers you. No, you don't get to escape. That's not how this works. Do you see that? We almost had her. That was luck. But we only have to get lucky once. She's going to kill this body either way. So stop feeling what it feels. She skewers you. Ooh, not bad. Real tough. It doesn't matter how many times this takes, we can't give up. <sighs> okay, let's go again. Let's appeal to her better nature. We haven't tried that. I'm sure she'll Have listen to Have a good Magna. She skewers you. See? We're getting better. Okay, okay, yeah. That was a good one. None of this is working. Think. Think. She skewers you. We're getting close to something, can't you feel it? One last time. You're right. One last time, that's all we need. 
and then everything goes dark, and you die. Mutually assured destruction. Your Honor, don't lose your head. We're in a cabin, and we'll take it from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. be quiet. Everything Our teeth like progressively getting fits, larger. Yes. It? We're up here, which is different, and different is good. And our steel claw is already in our hand. Ho ho! What if we throw it out the window? Over my dead body. That won't be very hard. We've died a lot. But I can't say I mind anymore. Oh God, Besides, voices what are fighting. better way to die so very many times than at the sharp hands of a beautiful woman? I'm sure, I hold can on, hold on, hold on. Way to die. So a little while ago, there was a like a, a trend with VTubers on what like your fighting clip or like your defeat clip would be for a fighting game, and that one was 100% what Pedro's would have been. Yeah. They're all the same, really. How about we stop thinking about horrible ways to die? I don't want us to accidentally manifest anything. The only thing we're gonna manifest is finally ending up on top. There are entirely too many of you. How many times have you been here? This isn't good. This is... How about you stick to describing things, and we'll stick to doing them? <laughs> I can clip yeah, it. Leave it to the pros. We'll notch up that win in no time. Narrator, we heroically stride through the door and towards our destined final encounter with our star crossed lover. Fine by me. You walk to the door and onto the basement stairs, only it's more of a slide. We know. Fine, I'll just shut up then and speed this whole thing along. Are you sure you don't want me to describe the stairs, or this room, or anything? It feels like I'm hardly a part of this. <laughs> oh, look at the narrator. Don't care. Just want to win. Fine. You make your way to the basement, where the princess awaits you. You know, this last time I killed you, and you didn't pop right back up again? I thought I'd actually done it. I thought I'd cut you into so many pieces, you just weren't able to stitch yourself back together. But I guess we're not done. That's okay with me. It's good, even. I like that. I got something ready for you while you were gone. Do you want to see it? I'm not going to wait for an answer. I'm just going to show you. It's worth it, though. Just you wait, and not for very long, because I'm going to do it right now. Are you going to say what she does? Uh, oh, do, do you want me to talk now? Oh my god, I hate this. Well, this narrator yeah, is the worst. She says she has something new. I want to hear about the new thing. Yeah, me too. I think I speak for all of us when I say that I would like to hear you describe her new thing. Really? Okay then. Here we go, now. The princess's skin oh. twists, splitting into red oh, beams I of raw meat as it stretches and tears. And then it I erupts. I take it back, we don't want you to describe the oak. a wave of blood and viscera, pieces of her splattering against the walls. All that remains in the center of the room is a skeleton of blades. A heart beats furiously in its cage of a chest. Are you ready for what comes next? Holy shit! She's gorgeous. No! Absolutely divine. Oh. Yes, behold, the perfect woman. Do you think we can throw her out the window? That looked painful. How is she still alive? Hearts still beating, that's all she needs. This is fake. This is all fake. That's all just made up. She doesn't even have a back anymore. How are we supposed to stab her in it? This is all just a sick joke. I 
hate existing. We're screwed. I, I quit. I'm done. Forget it. What just happened? It's so quiet. I have zened. Something feels different about you. It almost makes me feel different. Like I should actually take this seriously for once. You do not act, and yet, through that inaction, your body moves on its own. The princess strikes as you approach, but as her blow finishes its arc, you're already somewhere else. You're incredible. Your weapons clash again and again, you and her entering a rhythm free of thought and free of self. There is only the dance, the ebb and flow, the shifting of the tides back and forth between you. The deeper you fall into your play, the faster your hearts pound and the faster the momentum volleys between you. An endlessly building crescendo and then an opening. Your blade strikes free of volition and, her, and hers strikes too. Both strikes are lethal. Neither of you will survive, but neither of you fear what's to come. This is a good ending. And that one was Water and Steel. Master yourself and vanquish a shark bowl. You do not get to see each other die, nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. You do so. Silence as you reach towards the glass. It's time for you to see what's within. You are nothing at all. But that isn't right. You can't be nothing. You refocus your gaze and then you see it. A figure, faint and veiled in shadow, just beyond the reflection. Are you me? I think you know what I am. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splintering, splitting the image in the glass in two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another, turning the mirror into jagged shards of broken glass. Oh, was that, did that move? Oh, it did, it blinked, okay. So you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever get to see you. The narrator, yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. Oh, you are a bunch of birds? An objective birds? voice to guide your blade? Like crows? But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. Hey, Sebastian, have a good lurk. What are you? Are you something like me? Oh, I'm nothing like you. I'm an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Others like you? You've said something like that before. Has every narrator really been different? Of course. That is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you fail, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Do you have anything to say to yourself for all this hubris? I do people out there are real. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. I think I don't have infinite questions.
I'm sorry, I don't want to destroy you. Will it help if I look away or stop asking questions? We've already crossed the point of no return. There's no saving me now. Not that there's ever been much of me to save. If you made me, then what am I? You're the long quiet. The god I made to rid the world of death. What? I always knew I was special. What is the princess? Did you make her too? She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. So I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. This isn't the end just yet. You can still destroy her and save everyone. You were made to do this single task, and you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. What would it be like to live in a world without her? Light, burdenless, an eternal pattern of forgetfulness leading into the joys of rediscovery. Everyone will be with the ones they love. No more fear, no more howling chaos. Just life, forever. There's a cruel irony to it all. The only way I could share my dream with the world was to never be able to see it for myself. It's just that there's so always more questions. What if neither of us leave this place? Does that work? Can we just stay here together and leave the people out there alone? It wouldn't work. Her nature as the shifting mound makes it so nothing can last forever as it is now. It wouldn't matter how long the two of you waited. Eventually, she would find a way to leave, and then everything would change. Everything would face oblivion. And until then, the clock ticks on. I'm pretty sure death is good, actually important, even. If that's your belief, there's nothing I can say to move you. You haven't died. You cannot die. So you can't grasp the abject horror of dying. I've said my piece, and my time is up. I wanted my last thing to do was to destroy the mirror, but the game cocked me. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do.
As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with newfound clarity. The narrator was right. You are the long quiet, a vast and nascent, 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 God. It is finally time for you to wake up. All of this is you. One last time. Bring the razor full to her. When you arrive at the heart of things, there is no final vessel for you to bear witness to. There is nothing for you to find. I can finally see you, and you can finally see me. It's been so long, and my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. Do you know about the Echo? Did you hear our conversation? Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. What happens now? Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? Don't you have a say in all of this? Why is this all falling on me? Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens, just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. If you are always going to become this, and what was the point of me doing anything? Did it even matter? What roads I walked to follow them would have led to this moment? If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. A boundless torrent of blades cuts you from boundless angles. You are a body. You are gory ribbons. You are a body again. And you feel all of it. Okay, bitch. I was gonna let you go free because I believe that the world needs change and experience and death to make us better people but if you're gonna murder me then i'm just gonna be spiteful and you can stay here on and on it goes until your bodies are not your thoughts are not you alive dead alive dead alive dead then alive and dead and alive and dead all at once you learn to put yourself away and to follow the flow of reality and you used it to rise above me you died countless steely deaths, and you lived countless short lives, and yet it is all so far behind you. Unjust impossibilities pushed you to become something you would never have been without them. If you hadn't snatched that body away, we would have killed each other. We were self-destructive. Were we self-destructive? Or did the beauty of our dance reach beyond the shadow of death? 
It was lethality that made us what we were. Your liquor tried to sink into your body. And another, and another, and another. Do I miss your heart because I can't stand to see it go? But the stakes meant nothing to you. You had a desire, and you set that desire free. You lifting me, and me lifting you. Forever and ever and ever. Consumed by true belief, there was nothing that could hold us back. Remain silent. But you say nothing. Not this again. Why does she always go for the ankles? What force does she choose in your death and forfeit in your body? I'm getting distracted by like this sequence of events happening here. I'm sorry. I don't want that world to come to pass. Then accept the world as it is now, with both of us a part of it. Is it their body? Is it all of their body? <laughs> Listen. Pluck the eyes, peel the skin, strip the a tendons, vile person. mince the meat, grind the bones. When it is all gone, do you still have who you started with? And even the lover just stabbed me in the chest, so... A person is not a body. Death is a transformation into something new. It is only bodies that fear it. I don't fear death, not anymore. If you do not fear it, then there is no need for you to struggle against it. Let go. Leave with me. I won't leave with you. Not until you see things from my perspective. If you need more time to open your eyes, then I will give you all the time in the world. As the clash between you abates, the princess relaxes, smiling from a distance. The respite is welcome. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. I can't let that happen. Wait, wait. You are cruelty itself, and I cannot let you exist. <laughs> then try to destroy me if you can. But I will not yield easily to your delusion. You don't have to face her alone. You have no idea how good it is to hear you. It's good to be here. You'll never be able to strike a decisive blow from out here. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. And let's go.
And here we are. I'd say we were back where it all started, but I guess it's a little after that, isn't it? Strange beginnings. Do you need me to describe things? That'd be nice. A little comfort in an almost unfamiliar place. <laughs> oh, you made it here too. We never really got to talk to her, did we? <laughs> this one, I mean. Is it just the three of us? Did anyone else make it to the cabin? It's just us. I think the rest of them are still out there. Jumbled up in the rest of her. And I've been here since you left me here. No hard feelings. I'm just glad you're back to see this through. Is the narrator really gone? Yeah, it's dead silent in here. Whatever it was that was left of him, I don't think it could handle you waking up to godhood. Pretty sure he got obliterated. Really goes to show how much you've grown up. Killing somebody across every iteration of reality just by existing. I don't even know what I would do if I were in the driver's seat with that kind of power. It's funny, after everything he put us through, I'm kind of sad to see him go. Me too. He was a lot of fun. Really easy to mess with. <laughs> At least it seems you're honouring his memory. I'm sure he'd be proud to see you follow through on what he always wanted. If the offer still stands, could you describe the cabin to us? For old time's sake? Yeah, of course. The interior of the cabin is... well, it's not really a cabin, is it? It's that terrifying blend of everything. Only it doesn't feel so terrifying anymore. It's still shaped like a cabin, it's just different in places. There's still walls, a door to the basement, a table, that knife. Windows. You know, come to think of it, I don't think he ever really included the windows in his cabin descriptions, did he? I always thought they were implied. He never mentioned the mirror either, but that didn't mean he implied it was there. It's gone, though. I think it did whatever it needed to do. And I know I've already oh. mentioned it, but if we want to see this through, I we're going to need that blade. Didn't notice, but the uh, she's outside the like the she's outside the the windows. That's probably for the best. It's always seems to give us more things we can do, right? She wasn't there a second ago. She wasn't. Oh, I thought I just didn't notice her the entire time, which is normal for me. So, you're not going to suggest we throw it out the window? No, we've been through too much for that. And he's gone, so there's no one left to mess with but ourselves. You've gotten serious. Besides, what's the third beat? It isn't funny if I suggest that twice, especially since you never took me up on it last time. There's the guy I know. Throw the blade out the window. No. Those winding stairs again. But now there's only one way forward. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? Yeah, it was a real mess. Stopped being fun pretty quick. It's okay. You can come down. The stairs won't bite. Not this time. Let's talk one last time before you kill us, if that's still what you want to do. She doesn't sound messy anymore, though. At least somebody here feels put together. And forward we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. That was easy compared to last time. Just stairs. No weird fuzzy stuff or nonsense trying to pull us apart. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Even after everything you've seen, and all the lives we've lived together, you still want to kill us. 
The Echo really got his hooks into you. Unless you have your own reasons for wanting us dead? Oh god. I like part of me wants to sit with them, but I worry I won't get another chance to do it. So, so this I'm is just really gonna do it, it now. Let's see this through. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter. I've done all the talking I'm going to do. If she's like, if she is the embodiment of change and transformation in people, I could have quick saved. I know, but I haven't quick saved up until this point. I didn't want to do it now. But like, if she is the um, like personification of transformation and change in a person, and like the death of the person you were before after an experience, then you can't get rid of that, or else there's never any growth, there's never any change. Everything becomes stagnant and boring. And even if there's pain, there's also a lot of pleasantness with learning to be a new person from experience. So. So, you've made a choice for all of us. Even through everything, through all the worlds we've seen and experienced, through all the lives we've known and lost, we could never imagine a world without you and us. It doesn't feel possible. Despite it all, we've always loved you. We hope you don't regret what comes next. Wait a minute, did I just do this backwards? Oh, I did this backwards. Oh well. <laughs> I I was so mind fucked from our conversation with her constantly murdering us that I forgot. No, 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 I remember. I wanted to let her live after my conversation with the narrator because I was like, if she is change, then she needs to remain in the world. But then she kept murdering me, and then I was like, never mind, fuck that. <laughs> and then I forgot about it again, because <laughs> she was being so nice. Dumb. <laughs> Whatever action brought you and the princess into being was rough and jagged and left each of you with a piece of the other. By destroying her once and for all, you also destroyed a part of yourself, but the world hasn't ended. Things continue she's on. She's gone. And I don't think she's coming back. That's Leave right. We've got a whole world to see. You leave the basement behind. Then the stairs. Hey, Frogger. And then you leave the cabin itself. It's quiet here. Yeah, there's not a lot for us to do, is there? I'm good, how are you? The path and the woods outside are an empty canvas, but there is even more to see beyond this place. The fruits of your labor, a world free from death. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Oh, that's a cute little emote. Aww. I set yourself free. The body of an ancient creature stirs from its hibernation, and you feel sensation and limbs you once couldn't fathom. Everything here is you. You feel your wings spanning a cosmic scale, but twisted and crumpled and bound in agonizing tension to a finite plane. You can feel the glass of the construction pressing in on you confining you across infinite sides and infinite angles. You push back and strain against it, but it does not yield. Come on now. It shouldn't be that hard to break out of here. We're some sort of god, aren't we? He's gone. She's gone. No one is left to trap us here but us. How's the game so far? It's been really, really fun, but also kind of like, I feel like I'm missing a whole lot of nuance. <laughs> Open your heart and bear witness to your new kingdom. All at once, the unyielding tension gives way. And then the shattering. You are free. And before you lies the endless expanse of absolute reality, 
a new absolute reality, one forged by your will and by a long and arduous cycle of bloodshed that has stained your hands countless times over. But there will be no more bloodshed in this new world. It's finally over, isn't it? But all of us are still here. I knew we'd finally see it through. All it takes to be a winner is grit and determination. Hey, boys. We really did win, didn't we? We're the house now. We get to make the rules. That wasn't very hard at all. Speak for yourself. I hope this was all worth it. Because I'm personally inconsolable. Time mends a lot of things. You'll get better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hear, hear, to our vanquished foe. Welcome back, everyone. It's great to see you all again. Now we just have to figure out what to do with ourselves. However, no problem. We can do that, yeah? Yeah, we can do that. A new and unending dawn. Slay the princess. <laughs> We did it! And we managed to do it in four hours. That was fun! Oh wow, that's a lot of, of Patreon testers. Sheesh! Woohoo! We did it. Aw, oh, look at the little axolotl and the cat and the snack. Aw, oh, that's adorable. Thank you for playing. As an expression of our gratitude, here's the track order for a special playlist just for you. If you'd like to take a screenshot, you can hide the UI by hitting H. Aw. Oh. We did it. That was really fun! Thank you so much, Pedro, for gifting us the game during our game a thon. And thank you everybody for watching. That was that was super fun. I had a great time. Thank you. And that will be the end of the afternoon stream. That was a lot of fun. It's fun to just sit and chill. It was uh, like I said, uh Oh yeah, I imagine because they're all like a combination of like the routes that you choose to take. So you could probably have like a pretty pacifist one, right? That doesn't seem like such a horrid bitch like mine did because I was just like, somehow even though I went in with the intention of not like slaying any of the princesses, I always ended up getting like the horrible murdery ones. <laughs> I mean, you could still play the game yourself. There seems to be quite a lot of options left. I kept grabbing the knife. Well, you know, I just wanted to keep myself safe. You never know when you could need a knife. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to stab someone with it. Listen, I just like to be prepared, you know? I'm a survivalist. And you never leave loot behind because you never know what you're gonna need. And I guess you got upset about that. <laughs> well, we finished and that's, that's, um, it was really fun. Exactly. Or, you know, break a lock open or break a window without hurting your hands or slicing some wood to create a crawl space to crawl out of or loosening a brick. You know, there's loads of things that you can use a knife for. It doesn't necessarily have to be to stab someone to death. <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Padro, for your generosity. Yeah, or, or, or you can use it to stab someone. You never know when you have to stab someone. <laughs> Thank you for the head pets. But yeah, that's Slay the Sp- uh, Almost said Slay the Spire. Slay the Princess. And that is the afternoon stream. 
Uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. EST, just like always. I stream every day, 8 a.m. to noon EST, and most days, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., except for Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, we'll be playing, um, I believe, unless I'm wrong, I think it's Castle Crashers for the morning stream, and then Resident Evil 6. I just have to, let me go check that real quick. Um, game. I hate that I don't have this saved anywhere. Let's see, let's see. Game of Thrones. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we have Wobble Dogs. And Gull won't be here for Astroneer. So, yes, we will have um, Castle Crashers. And then Resident Evil 6 in the afternoon. We'll probably I will probably play one stream in the morning of Castle Crashers and then Resident Evil 6 in the afternoon. Thanks to Wolfram. Yeah, we had somebody gift somebody. Somebody. We had Wolf redeemed Resident Evil 6 during the Game of Thon. So we'll be playing Resident Evil 6 um, after uh, castle crashes in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, that'll, that'll be the schedule for tomorrow. So thank you so much everybody for spending your time with me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you to Sakura Seraph and Wendigo Bacon Man for the follows. And thank you to Mr. Alt-Tab for resubbing at tier one for three months in a row. Thank you so much. I hope everybody sleeps well. If I don't see you again, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I truly appreciate it. And for all of those who will be back tomorrow, I, I hope you sleep well. And I'll see you again soon. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm-mm.